right, today we got a little bit of a shout out to the volleyball player. It's going to give you two top drills that you really need to be adding to your training. You're going to see one with some lateral movements, and then we're going to do some leaning sprints. But let's get into each one of them. The first one you're going to see is very important for trying to teach these volleyball players how to get to the ball quickly and move and understand proper footwork. When you analyze the video, you'll definitely see there's no crossing over the of the feet. It's not a football style drill where you're trying to accelerate away, right? You know that when you say you're telling them why, I think that is so important for athletes to understand. I'm not just doing this because you like it or you know, right. what's the reason? Yeah, we're really trying to train the footwork moving from side to side in a fashion that's not just laterally, but a little bit of a drop step. And you'll notice that we're, we've got good feet working in this drill. This is from CC Storm Volleyball. Uh, they've been posting uh, lots of things with our training equipment uh, and had to give them a shout out here because they really do post a lot of great drills. Give them a follow if you haven't seen them before. But overall, we want to break down this drill to kind of bring you some things to make sure you're doing and things you're not doing. I really like the way she's moving. She's staying low. She's keeping the feet apart, not bringing them together. She's got her head up. Always trying to keep her eyes towards the net. I mean, to yeah, be honest, the ball. You, yeah, you, you've got to be watching the net and, and – it's similar to a little bit, like I said, with football drills is you got to pick up the football. You got to pick up the ball. So if you want to take this drill another notch, you know, one basic format would be simply, you know, you do two to the left, two to the right, things like that. But to make it a little bit more interesting and more advanced, let that athlete read a coach in the front. We want to be directly exploding towards a ball. So take a ball, move it out to the left, move it out to the right, trigger the movements. And then when they take that back shuffle, get to the cone and then move back to that home point. But you really can't, I mean, K-bands in this specific fashion, roasters, oh, roast your geez. legs. You see that resistance and it, she's kind of making it look easy. That is really firing those hips and the glutes and her quads have to be burning. And so she's really getting a lot more in the same amount of time. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Whenever you don't have the bands on and you're doing shuffling style drills, uh, you kind of don't get the same kind of activation out of your glutes. But if you're doing this type of a drill with K-bands around your knees, your legs are on absolute fire. Your glutes and... Uh, it helps with stability so much. Do a couple repetitions, six to eight resisted, unclip those things, feel how much quicker your body can move. Ultimate muscle recruitment, and you'll be able to build muscle during these speed type of drills. The one thing that I would suggest is you do not want to put on too much resistance. We see it all the time. We give you a lot of different levels of resistance that you can use, but everybody always seems to just strap on well, the strongest everybody bands. everybody thinks that more is better. All we're trying to do is give you... 10 to maybe 15 percent resistance to make it more challenging so you have to maintain form if you can't yes. maintain form and, and you see the knees kind of leaking in a little bit getting too much resistance that means the glutes aren't strong enough so move down in the resistance a little bit if you consistently see that we're able to maintain great form good knee drive and any drills that you're doing then you move up a notch move up into the heavier bands move you from can, your you can also increase the reps if you don't go up on the on the resistance level too. So don't push them to a, where they shouldn't be. And in this format of a drill too, this shuffle style drill, you wanna keep it quick moving from side to side. So only keep your athletes in about a 15 to 20 second window of that quick ballistic movement and then give them a break. Whether you're doing teams in a long line and you've got several girls deep, just make sure that the working sets 15 to 20 seconds, give them a break, get another group in there so that we're not uh, taking it too far. Those bands are going to roast you. So work hard during the training set and then take yourself a little 30, 45 second break and then you'll move into another set. Now, do you think that this specific movement, or I guess I should say, explain to me how this is such a great drill for volleyball. Well, she's learning to go laterally. She's going to learn to go forward and back. Volleyball basically is if the positions are compact. So I don't know, maybe 10 feet is the most you're ever going to move. And you need to be quick and you need to be able to re react. One thing that might help this drill too, I'm always the guy that likes to put the ball in play. Right. So maybe at the end, you, you know, because the other team's not going to hit it right where you think – they are so you got to be able to rec react going back and yeah, forth. Yeah, you can adjust this type of drill to different modifications at the end, whether it be having them set, have them do something with the ball. 
A lot of times, a lot of speed and agility, you, know, you got to mix in the stuff that's sports specific to keep right. it fun for the girls. And then for you sure. can double dip with the skills. And you notice, again, she's she's looking for the ball. She's got her head up. You know how she's staying in that crouch a little bit. That's the proper position to play the game. Well, knees are a big problem for women in volleyball. That's one of the major injuries that you have. Of course, shoulders and knees are going to be high on the list. So whenever you're using K-bands, a great part about them is you're building your glutes for better stability in your knees. So this kind of a drill can, it can really help an awful lot, and it's fun to do in a team setting. You're not going to find better drills than ones that you can do with your whole group towards the end of practice rather than sending them home and giving them a whole bunch of homework and things to do. It's not going to be near as effective. So utilize this type of a speed drill um, at the end of your workout and then move into our second exercise. And our second exercise is going to be like a leaning sprint. Well, you notice in this drill, you can do this as a team. So you can... You, you can accomplish a lot in a very short period of time. Yeah, it, b it butts up real nice with that last drill we went over. But the leaning sprints to make sure that people are doing them properly. Again, they're wearing K-bands here. K-bands, the one nice thing about them when you're doing a sprint format is it really shows you when you don't use your knees to drive. And now, why would you want that in volleyball? Of course, you're not running long-distance sprints, but you have to develop power in a short amount of time to get vertical. If you well, want to, if you want to if you want to be quick, you got to lift you got to have a little bit of knee drive. Lift that quad. This is going to help you do that quick cuz you're only trying to get that 3 or 4 or 5 feet. Yeah, the stronger your hip flexors are, the stronger your quads are, the stronger your glutes are, you're going to be able to jump higher, you're going to be able to move quicker. So in this format of a drill, you're going to lean and sprint. Once again, it takes about 4 or 5 minutes at the end of practice to get this in, but you want to be conscious of form here. On a leaning sprint, you have to lean farther than maybe the average person might. If you've been first introduced to this, you probably won't do it right. You take a little bitty lean and then you'll take off running. That's not what this drill is. This drill should be a catch version of a drill. So you should lean almost to where you're about to fall on your face. It's, kind of, it's an overspeed drill, sort of. Well, to, overload. To you're your, trying to overload the mess. And, and you're trying to be able to, to move quickly, maybe a little bit faster than you normally would or think you can. It's great for loading your, your drive in the dig phase. So if you lean, 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 and then you got to catch, you're in a very down position that you have to load your hips and then explode out. So if you're going to be doing this drill, don't be lazy with just a slight lean. Do it right. Make sure you almost, it's kind of funny, you can almost take about two, three minutes at the beginning of this drill, have everybody just work on their lean first step. That way you get your eyeballs on them and you make sure they're doing it right. Because if they're not leaning and, oh, I almost took that one too far. Well, well you, you probably did. Back it off a little bit. They need to get bit. comfortable. Maybe they're, they're thinking I'm going to face plant. So you need to get comfortable with it and understand what I'm trying to accomplish. So in this specific format, you probably want to keep them a little bit short. You're, you're held in a, a tighter constraint, right? Volleyball courts aren't huge. You're not going to be running 40 yard sprints, but you don't want to keep them so short, right? If all you're doing is taking four strides, you're kind of defeating the purpose of what the exercise can do for you. If you lean forward heavily, you're going to be big into the dig phase. Make sure that you give yourself enough room to get the results of driving through, getting through the resistance of K-bands, because if you stop right at the net and you're working on the end line, you're not really this, getting the whole benefit of the exercise. I think this is one of the drills where it's not necessarily sports specific because we want you to get into that dig phase and get into that speed phase. Now, when you go back to the court, you're not going to do that. But the faster I get to the ball, under control. Well, the thing I like about this drill, though, is for your spiker. Anyone that's coming up to the net to spike, this is a great drill to work on their explosiveness forward. Because really, the more you can load up your hips in a short amount of time, getting your body weight forward, the more potential you're going to have for vertical. So in that format, is it applicable to every position on the court? You know, it's probably not going to shine as bright as it does for the the girls running out to the edges to, to spike. Right. It but, but I also think that if you're trying to, to dig to get that low ball, that's going to that's gonna show if you can, you know, just a, a few more times where you're successful and it doesn't hit the floor. Yeah, I think it, the one thing that's kind of interesting about girls' athletics in general with volleyball training is it, it always just seems like uh, the, there's CC Storm is a great example of people that are really embracing training. When you get into these younger ages, it seems like, 
guys sports are a little bit more advanced in the sense of the other types of training they're doing they're not just doing the sport they're also doing you know ladder drills they're also doing athletic based drills and it's kind of cool to see uh, the girls sports are coming along pretty darn quick in the last couple of years where you're seeing tons of girls getting access to this type of speed and agility training at well, those younger they're, ages. They're athletes and they need to train like that. 